Hello. Right, so I've got this eye working. Uh, this video again is sponsored by Autodesk. But it's just me messing around really, <laughs> trying to figure out stuff in Bifrost. So um, yeah, anyway, this uh, controller here, this um, null locator thing is driving the these shapes, which, you know, show the eye looking left and right. I'm bothered doing the other side, don't worry about that. Um, but what I wanted to do was make it so that there's also a a system for blinks. Sometimes blinks can sort of interact nastily in blend shapes when you've got this sort of stuff going on and then you've got a blink blend shape over the top. But one way of good good way of dealing with it is to make a separate stream of blink shapes that also do this looking left and right and up and down. Um, so I haven't done all of those, but I've done a, sh a one looking down and up there just to demonstrate this and I'm going to feed those into my eye solver. Uh, I neatened up this compound by the way just because uh, I thought it was actually nicer to have everything inside one compound so I just I haven't changed anything of the contents but if I go in there I just added other bits inside it like that. So we've got this section that is the input for the rotations this bit here is all the looking around stuff. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is make a separate stream down here of stuff which deals with just the blink stuff. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is just sort of slightly change this. I'm going to have two streams. So I'm going to have that one coming in from there, and then this one here is going to take my input from the other one. Uh, and those two streams are just going to have the deltas in. So I'm going to take the point position out, which is what you need to kind of make it go back to a full shape again. And I'll plug it in there. This lot here, the looking around stuff, I'll just um, make a compound out of. And I could call that looking around. Um, let's just <laughs> okay. Look around, and then below here, I'll make a similar one, but just for for the blinking. So that one there, that input there is coming in from here. So it's called mesh six, but I'll rename that to blink up, and that one called blink down. They're called shut up and shut down, but I mean, you know, effectively it's the same thing. And um, I want to steal some stuff from inside here and just copy and paste it. So that section there, I'm going to need something like that. And um, let's come outside here and paste that in there and hook this up. The blink up, we're going to need that point position in from there. This value we're going to need from the X, which is the going around in the up and down direction. And we're going to need to plug that into there. In fact, let's just plug, let's just plug this in at the moment so we can just see the blink related business. And we'll copy that, paste it, plug that add in there and take that to the down one rather than the up one. Okay, so now hopefully this should work with the blink if I look up or down. <laughs> but it's not. Oh, it is when it's going down, but it's not when it's going up. Let's see why that is. Oh, of course, because I haven't done these change ranges yet, sorry. So when it's up, Let's have a look at the range of this when it's up. So it's um, at minus 27 when it's up and it's at 21 when it's down. So we need to change these. So for the blink up, which is the top one, um, I need that to be at 21 
and minus 27. And hopefully that'll go to blink. No, okay. Why is that not right? Up at minus 27. Oh, I've got it the wrong way around, sorry. Minus 27 and then 21 when it's down. Okay, so that's the blink looking upwards. And when it's down, it needs to be the other way around. So what was that one again? 21 minus 27, and this will be the other way around. Minus 27 and 21. So he should be blinking all the time now, but it, it sort of looks up and down that blink. And again, I mean, I've just done this roughly to show, but you could do this looking, so the blink changes when he's looking left and right as well. So this whole section here deals with when the eye is shut. So let's call that, let's just select that. Control G, compound. Zoom in a bit. Look around, I'll call this one blink around or something like that. Okay. I never quite hit the right spot up here. There might be a better way of doing this. Let's rename, no. Okay, blink around. And we want to be able to blend between these two things. Now these don't compete because they're completely separate streams. But what I do need to blend between them for a blink. So what I do is get a lerp, which is a thing which is like a linear interpolator between this lot and that lot. And if I plug that in, um, you can see now that the, the fraction or the thing that blends between them is a vector, but I want that as a single value, so I'm going to change that to a float. And now I've got it at zero. If I do 0.5, it's going to be halfway between, or at one, it's going to be fully blinked. And I can expose that value, that fraction, in the compound like this, and call that Let's just um, zoom in on that. Call that um, blink. And expose that in the top of the scene like that. So blink. Now that should appear. Now if I've got this graph open here, now that value's in the, in the um, you know, interface. So I can set key there, go a couple of frames forward and um, I could change that to one and set key. So now it'll do this. And obviously if it looked left and right, if I had left and right for the blink, that would still be there. Obviously it looks, that would look nicer than this. And then I can set it back again. Put my blinks in like that. So let's put another one there. Let's set a key, go forward a couple of frames. Another key. Like that. Um, I'll show other stuff maybe with eyelids later on. You can also do a thing which makes the eye be pushed out by the cornea. So you get a bulge effect, which is quite easy to do as well with ray casting, but I won't bother doing that on this one. I just wanted to show how you how you would um, use this in a scene. Now this biff shape here, you can't put a, it's not a Maya mesh, it's like a biff object, you know, bifrost object um, that you can't add bones and things like that to if you wanted to put skinning on top of this blend shape stuff. So if you want to make it into a Maya mesh, you go into the node editor and you go um, bifrost, Geo to Maya, and the Bifrost Geo is this Biff shape, but I think you can just use the out geometry here, and now you've got a Maya mesh. So if we make just a sphere or something, and get rid of this polysphere input, and just replace that with the Maya mesh input, then we can call that sphere something else, say, um, you know, Beast. BF for Bifrost, best friend. 
no Bifrost. And uh, now it does exist in the scene as a Maya Mesh. So we've dispensed with that Biff. We've sort of bypassed that. I think you can probably even just delete the Biff. And now this is a normal Maya Mesh. So you can put your skinning and stuff on top of here. And you can also have a Bifrost graph after the skinning if you wanted to. Um, by feeding into a different object, but I'll show that at another time. But anyway, that's how you would make it into something which is more like a you know usable deformer. So you've got your input mesh and all of your um, you know uh, blend shapes and stuff. You probably just stick those inside there and not have to worry about them. Um, and then you've got you know you've got all that stuff that deals with this you know all the inputs in there. And at this stage, it's kind of like a normal mesh. And you can still, you know, expose all your controls and everything like that. So, yeah, I thought it was useful to know that. Okay, thank you. Cheers, bye.